So uh, my name is Rob Woolley, and I work at Wind River. And since 2018, I've been working with the Robot Operating System Framework. Um, I recently volunteered to help out maintain the Meta Ross layer. And I thought a great way to get started would be to present at this summit to let people know about uh, the Robot Operating System and how you can use that with Yocto in order to help uh, get other people interested and involved who want to build their own robot at home. So in today's talk, um, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview of what ROS is, and then talk about how you can get started with ROS on Yocto. So first off, what is the robot operating system? So it was created in 2007. Oops. And it's, sorry, can you see my screen, David? Yes, go ahead. Um, so it was created in 2007, and it was created as a set of frameworks for, to make it easier to develop software to build robots. And the big advantage of this framework is that people could start to share different components and they didn't have to rebuild everything from scratch. It's under an open source um, light set of licenses, mostly permissive, like Apache and BSD, and it continues to grow. So here's a picture from the recent Roscon in Kyoto with 108 attendees from numerous companies and uh, academic institutions. So you may wonder, what, uh, what can you use ROS for? Well, it's more than just toy robots. You can use it for aerial robots. You can use it for ground robots, including automotive uh, manipulators, such as robot arms, as well as uh, marine robots. And here's an example of an Indy Autonomous Challenge where these race cars were being powered by ROS. There is uh, two main flavors of ROS. There's the original ROS and ROS2, which is a re-architecture. Now it can get quite confusing with all the names going around, especially when you combine it with Yocto. So to help uh, identify some of the names you might hear, Within ROS1, there was Melodic that was released in 2018 and Noetic, which was released most recently in 2020. Now this re-architecture of ROS to create ROS2 was done for a number of reasons. It was meant to simplify the architecture, but also to make it more available for uh, real-time applications and to um, make it possible to continue to move forward in creating different types of robots. And within ROS2, we see Dashing, Eloquent, Foxy, Galactic, and Humble. Humble being the latest stable release. And the ongoing uh, ROS distribution, which is continuously being developed, is Rolling. So Rolling is much like Arch Linux in that it's uh, continuously changing. And then these ROS2 releases get cut from Rolling. Now within ROS, uh, it has a layered architecture. So you can provide a, a, your own hardware or operating system underneath, but what ROS really provides is the ability to connect all of the uh, parts of your system through DDS, which is a multicast protocol, which allows all of the different applications or services on ROS to communicate by sending uh, messages back and forth. And then there's a middleware API so that you don't need to send the DDS's, DDS messages directly. You instead can go through an API that's more, more suited for um, ro robot type uh, interactions. And on top of that, there's the client layer, which allows you to use your language of choice, be it C, C++, or Python, and then your applications, which sit on top. And this architecture allows for different combinations. So you can choose um, your choice of, of board. You can choose a variety of operating systems that support uh, ROS, including Ubuntu, which is the, uh, the default used by the majority of people. But uh, through our work, uh, Yocto also works with ROS, as well as RTOSs like QNX and VxWorks. And there are even different implementations of uh, various DDS um, stacks that uh, people use within ROS. And then in the top left corner, you can see examples of different um, applications and services that people can layer on top of this architecture, such as move it, nav, and control. And these are all subsystems that do things like the ability to send control messages, 
to the different parts of the robot or between us uh, robots within a swarm or even help with assistance like navigation features or the mechanics of actually moving the robot around and this really sort of speaks to the power of the whole architecture because it means that someone can pull together all of these fantastic open source components that are provided by other people in the community now if you're developing a robot you may not have a physical robot to work with and or you may need to try out your software before you can deploy it to the physical robot and to address that ross also incorporates these tools uh, gazebo and arvis so here's an example of uh, gazebo and arvis from um, the aws robomaker and in they've created a uh, sample environment that's meant to represent an amazon warehouse on the left and gazebo is showing you the simulation of that environment and on the right the arvis tool is showing you the perception of that environment from the perspective of the robot itself so it's using lidar or other sensors to detect the objects within the virtual environment so that it can make those decisions on how to navigate around and this is fantastic for trying out different algorithms in a, without having to actually construct a physical environment for your robot to work in. So now that I've given you an overview of what ROS is and how you might use it, let's talk a little bit about the meta ROS layer. So this was this is an integration layer that has been created so that you can execute the existing ROS build system with BitBake for open embedded. And it was started uh, many years ago by BMW and recently maintained by LG. And there are quite a number of uh, recipes that are provided by this. So just for a single Yocto release, there are 8,649 new recipes when you include all of the new recipe files for all of the various ROS and ROS2 distros. If you look at the meta ROS layer, you'll notice that the branches are all Yocto releases, such as Honister, and then there are sub layers that are all named after the ROS distros, such as meta ROS2 Humble. And this makes it quite a challenge because of all the different combinations of Yocto and ROS distros uh, that are possible. To focus in on the ones that are currently supported, here's a table that shows you the currently supported ROS1 releases, Melodic and Noetic, and the supported ROS2 releases and the various dates in which they become those combinations become end of life. So um, at this moment, we have been working on getting Honester with Humble working so that we can then use those recipes to add support for uh, the future Yocto releases such as Langdale um, and then we'll be branching out to the other the other um, combinations as well. So we we have uh, Honester 3.4.4 building um, all of the packages within ROS uh, for uh, ROS2 Humble. Now, this effort could not be done manually. So in order to help uh, automate this, uh, we take advantage of some of the tooling of already available in the ROS community. So there's a ROS DEP tool that's used to download package information from the ROS distros repository, which is located on GitHub. And using the package metadata, um, a number of tools that are provided in the meta ROS layer actually generate caches and then generate recipes based on all of that metadata in a format that BitBake can understand. And then in order to fix any mistakes by the tool, we use BB Appends to add any missing dependencies or to patch any CMake files in order to ensure that the build is successful. And if you're looking around the Meta ROS branch, one thing to note is that there's a lot of um, useful information within the build branch and particularly configuration files that show the supported combinations because you could imagine finding all of the repositories and which commits to use could be quite arduous. And these are all stored within um, files subdirectories that contain metadata about what those combinations are, which repositories to get, and which commits to check out. And there's even a handy MCF tool that was created 
which is analogous to say CAS or something or, or other tools that are out there, which can be used to quickly get up and started with a known configuration. So how to get started? Well, very few of us actually have a robot in our homes, but the uh, Open Robotics has worked with various suppliers to create reference robots that are relatively low cost as reference boards for people to get started. To give you an idea, the um, older TurtleBot 3 is around $600 US, which is fairly reasonable. And the uh, TurtleBot 4, which has just been released, um, is around $1,000 to $2,000. And um, you can use any hardware you want with these boards, but by default, they assume a Raspberry Pi. So um, if you want to get started with the TurtleBot 3, um, these are the instructions that you could use to actually build the ROS2 Humble with the Yocto Honester. And um, normally we would get that directly from the ROS MetaROS um, repository, and there's full instructions on how to do that on the ROS2 wiki. But for convenience, because we've just cut the new patch release for Humble, um, you can get it from my own GitHub repository, and um, I know these instructions work as of today. So with these few instructions here, you can tell it um, which branch in which commit to use. And the MCF tool will uh, go and download all of the repositories. And then you can get started and build it like you would normally with Yocto by sourcing your environment and doing a bit bake build. Here I've intentionally chosen ROS image core, which is the core subset of the packages. If you're really interested in seeing your machine go, uh, try Ross Image World. There's about 18,000 tasks or so that need to complete, and it could take many hours. Um, the amazing thing about Ross is just the sheer number of packages that are available. Um, and if you ever want to stress test your machine, it's certainly a good test. There's a couple of packages worthy of note. The Point Cloud Library Package, or PCL, has a habit of, uh, uses heavy C++ templating, and it has a habit of getting killed by the Oom killer, which, uh, because it can take uh, one to four gigabytes of memory just to do all the C++ processing. And a few of the other packages in the linking stage can easily take up to half an hour just to do the build. And I mention these because I feel that this really shows um, where Yocto provides a lot of value, especially for building robots, because you could imagine if you were trying to do a native build, it's very unlikely that your robot would have the 32 or 64 or more gigabytes of memory in order to do some of these builds. And it would take much, much longer than if you were to use a, a large workstation with many cores to tear through these 18,000 tasks. So I personally feel that this makes uh, Yocto an excellent fit for robotics, and it's why um, I feel it's important to continue this work so that people can benefit from Yocto when they're building their robots with ROS. Now, um, I'll just quickly reshare so that I make sure to optimize for video. If you want to see an example of um, the robot moving, um, on the next slide, I have an example of a TurtleBot 3, which is using LiDAR. So this is uh, a demonstration from a year or two ago in Embedded World. Using LiDAR up on top to detect the pillars as it's moving around this table. And it's using the navigation subsystem to figure out how to move around without knocking over any of the pillars. So this is something that you could do at home using the software and using some of the TurtleBot 3 examples that, um, that are freely available. And with that, um, I will just uh, suggest if you're interested in getting started, um, please attend our next uh, ROS Open Embedded Working Group meeting on December 15th. Um, more details on how to join can be found at this URL. We'd love to talk with you about Yocto and Ross, and I encourage everybody to attend.